Okay, so this is the key to topic 28, worksheet 3. And um, so in, in, uh, on this worksheet 3, you're give, you have kind of two sets of problems. You have one where you're given a set of ordered pairs, and you're asked to, to find the inverse, and you're, you're told it's a one-to-one, -one, so you don't have to check to see if it's one-to-one -one in this case. And then number 3, um, you're told that all these are one-to-one -one function, and you're asked to find the inverse. And number 2, rather. So let's look at number 1. So number one, you have f is the set of ordered pairs, negative 7, 2, um, 8, 5, negative 3, 1, and 7, 8. Now, I just want to say this. See, they, they told you it was one-to-one -one function, so you don't have to check that. But if, they're not, if they didn't tell you that, then you need to make sure that this is a one-to-one -one function because only one-to-one -one functions will have an inverse. And so... so, so uh, if you just want to check, check to see if it's one to one. Even though even though you're told it is, f is one to one. Then remember, you're going to do this. You're going to do, you're going to do that mapping for each for each y. Remember, that's got to be just just one x, one x. So so um, uh, the the point negative seven two implies that when 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 y is two, my x. Uh, value is negative 7. When y is 5, I get a value of 8 for x. When y is 1, I get a value of negative 3. And when y is 8, I get a value of 7. So notice that for each x for each y coordinate, there's only one x coordinate. So that's why it's 1 to 1. So since it's 1 to 1, though, it has an inverse. And remember, to find the inverse, all you do is interchange the coordinates. So the point negative 7, 2 becomes the point to negative seven. So if seven two is 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 a point on on the function f, then negative then two negative seven is a point on the inverse. Eight five becomes five eight on the inverse. Negative three one becomes one negative three and then seven eight becomes uh, eight seven. Okay? And that's all they want you to do number one. All right, number 2a, you're told g of x is x cubed plus 8. And you're told these are one-to-one -one functions, although you knew this one was already, because you remember the cube, the cube function, the cube function looks, looks like this. Let me just kind of do it this way. It looks like that. And all you're doing is shifting up 8 units. So it'll be something like this. And notice it passes the horizontal line test. Now, you want to do these algebraically, so you have to show the work. So this is the work you're going to do. So step one, remember step one, is to replace g of x with y. So y equals x cubed plus 8. Step two is where you interchange the variables. So y becomes x, x becomes y. So x equal y cubed plus 8. Step three is to solve for y. So you're going to subtract 8 from both sides. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. So I get x minus 8 equals y cubed. And then to get y by itself, right now I'm cubing, both, I'm cubing y. So the opposite is the cube root. So I'm going to cube, take the cube root of both sides. And so I get the, the, y, the, uh, the, the cube root and the cube undo each other. So I get y equal the cube root of x minus 8. And then step four is where you replace y with f inverse. In this case, I'm sorry, g inverse. So g inverse. So, so remember, remember this y, this y right here, is, stands for g of x. This y right here stands for the inverse. So right away, you, you just go ahead and say, just go ahead and say g inverse of x. So that's your step four. So step four, g inverse of x is equal to the cube root of x minus a. So remember, the inverse undoes what the function does. So the function, if the function cubes x and then adds 8, the inverse, notice what it is, subtracts 8 and then takes the cube root. Okay? Alright, so that's 2a. So, so in 2b, we have this for 2b. Alright, so 2b, we have f of x is x squared minus 7. Now there's something else there, but but notice that, that in, and of, in and of itself, this is not a one-to-one -one function. A, this quadratic function is not one-to-one. -one, but notice that 
that you are told that x is greater than or equal to 0, so we're restricting the domain. What that means is this. If you look at the graph of this with this restriction, so you're shifting x squared down 7 units, you're only looking at this part of the graph. And so notice that this is a 1 to 1 function. All right, and so now we can, since a 1 to 1 function, you can find the inverse. All right, so let's go ahead and find the inverse. So step 1, replace f of x with y. So y equals x squared minus 7. Okay. Step 2, interchange a coordinate. So y becomes uh, x and x becomes y. Also keep in mind, so you have this. So you've got to say this point, when, when you interchange the coordinates right here, you have to say y is greater than or equal to 0. So that means that, that I'm only going to be interested in the positive y value. And that's going to play an important role in a little while. So step three is to solve for y. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So I get x plus 7 equal y squared. Kind of makes sense that it looks like this so far, right? Because remember, f of x takes, takes x and squares it and then subtracts 7. The inverse will add 7, so add 7, and then take the square root of both sides. And that's what's going to happen next. So, so in, the, in the next part, you're going to take the square root of both sides. But some students, because of habit, when they're solving a, a uh, quadratic equation, take the square root of both sides, they think plus or minus. But remember, you're only looking at positive square roots of y here. And so, and so when you take the square root of both sides, you're only going to do the positive square root. So you get y equals the square root of x plus 7. And there's your inverse. So that's f inverse of x. So step four, you're going to say f inverse of x is the square root of x plus 7. All right, so that's 2b. All right, in 2c, let's look at 2c. So 2c, you have this rational function. Um, so h of x is 3 divided by x plus 4. All right, so you're told it is a one-to-one -one function, so it does have an inverse. And so let's go ahead and do this algebraically. So, um, so step one, replace h of x with y. So y equals 3 divided by x plus 4. Step two, step two, you interchange a coordinate, uh, interchange of variables. So this becomes x equal 3 divided by y plus 4. And then step 3 is to solve for y. Now notice that this is a rational equation. So what you may want to do is think of this as this. x divided by 1 equals 3 divided by y plus 4. And so, so you, you can think of this as, as uh, multiplying both sides by the LCD, which is y plus 4. Or you can just cross multiply since you do have this proportion. So when I cross multiply, uh, and, and let's just do it this way, let's, let's, let's multiply both sides by the LCD. So multiply by LCD, which is y plus 4. So I'm going to rewrite this over uh, like this. And so I'm going to say times y plus 4 times y plus 4. Okay? And notice that these y plus 4s divide out here. And over here you have, you have x times y plus 4. This right here is this, equal 3. All right, now here's the situation you're going to come across. Because, because remember, you step step 3, um, so step 3 is where is where you got to solve for y. So i got to get y by itself. So first thing you got to do is, is distribute this x. So distribute the x, you're going to get um, xy plus 4x equal 3. And now notice, I want you to notice something. So to get y by itself, this is the only term, this is the only term with the variable y. So let's bring this 4x to the other side. So subtract 4x from both sides. And so I get xy equal 3 minus 4x. And then the next step, remember we're trying to get y by itself. But right now I'm multiplying by x. The opposite is to divide by x. So I'm going to divide both sides by x. The x is divided out, so there's your inverse. So the inverse is this, and that's that's uh, uh, h inverse of x. All right. So step four, you're just going to say h inverse of x. Remember, step four is where where you replace uh, this y with the inverse, because um, you notice that this y is now the inverse because you interchange the coordinates. So you get three minus four x divided by x. Okay. 
So that's the inverse for our number. Um, uh, this was for, for letter C. All right, letter D. Let's look at letter D. Okay, so in letter D, we have f of x is, is uh, uh, equal to the square root of x plus 7. Now, this is a one-to-one -one function um, because, remember, the, the domain of this function, remember, whenever, you, whenever you're looking at a square root function, you can only take the square root of a positive number of 0. So, so if you want to find the domain, you're just going to set the radicand greater than or equal to 0, and so you have x is greater than or equal to negative 7. So that's your domain. This is your domain. Okay, so, so if you look at the graph, if you look at the graph, it looks something like this. So negative 7 is right here, so it looks something like this. And so notice this is 1 to 1. Okay, now let's go ahead and find the inverse. So, so you are told, remember in the, in the directions, you are told that, that this is a, that all these are 1 to 1 functions. So, so step 1, step 1, you're going to replace f of x with y. So you get y equal the square root of x plus 7, okay? Step 2, you interchange the variables. So x equal the square root of y plus 7. Step 3 is to solve for y. So let's think about what we have now. See, y is over here. So, so y plus 7 is the radicand of this square root. And so to get y, to, to get y by itself, first of all, I get, get rid of that square root symbol. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. So, so the opposite of square rooting is to square both sides, just like this. And so now I'll get x squared equal, and then the square and the square root undo each other, y plus 7. And then finally, all you do is subtract 7 from both sides, and you get x squared minus 7 is equal to y. And there's your inverse. So, so step 4 is to replace, step 4 is to replace y with, with the inverse. And we're using f of x, so we're going to say f inverse of x is equal to x squared minus 7. All right? So, so the inverse of this, of this function right here, this square root function, is this. Now, be a little bit careful. Um, um, so, so some of you are going to say, well, well, that's a quadratic function. I thought that, that quadratic function were not one to one. Yeah, but remember, remember right here, so you see right here, when I replaced, when I replaced, and you didn't have to know that for this one, but when I replaced the, the variables here, this became this became y is greater than or equal to negative seven. And so and so notice that that um, uh, if I were to graph this, I'm only looking at I'm only looking at the part. Watch, let me just kind of show you. Okay, so so let's let's go back over here before I kind of show you this. So see right here where where we had that that uh, x is greater than or equal to 7, that's domain. Now you see the range, the range here, the range uh, right here, the range is that y is greater than or equal to 0, right? So when I interchange the coordinates, when I interchange the coordinates, the, the inverse, now this is for the inverse right here, so, so the range will now be greater than or equal to negative 7, and, the, and the, um, uh, the domain, remember the range becomes a domain, so the domain then will be x is greater than or equal to zero, and so now when I when I graph this piece right here, when I graph this piece, so here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but I'm only looking at the part where it's where it's greater than or equal to zero. So I'm only looking at this piece here. So so notice that the inverse of this is this right here. All right. Now that is a um, complicated discussion right here. But algebraically, this is all I wanted you to do. All right, so, so uh, to do this algebraically, you're going to replace f of x with y, interchange the variables, which basically means that, that um, if this is domain and the range of f of x, then this right here, you interchange the, so, so the domain becomes the range and the range becomes the domain of the inverse. And, and so that kind of makes sense because if you look at the inverse right here, so, so the range is from seven, negative 7 to infinity, and the domain of the inverse is from 0 to infinity. All right, and so that's it. That's, that's all you do. All right, so, this is, so that is the key to 
to topic 28, um, worksheet 3.